me change some oil. You better pull that old mechanic outfit out of the garage and get ready to do some work. To change the oil, you're gonna need a 14 millimeter and a ratchet to take a drain plug off. Once the oil gets drained off, you're gonna to wanna to take out your oil filter, which is gonna need this wrench right here. After that, you're gonna to wanna to put the new oil filter on, and then you're gonna to wanna to put the new oil in. Make sure to put your drain plug in. You're gonna to need to use a funnel and some good oil. You're probably gonna need some rags eventually, and this motor they're working on today leaks oil, so you're gonna to wanna to put some of this engine repair oil leak stop in there. But where's all that burnt oil go, you ask? Into one of these things that holds burnt oil. Don't pour it on the ground, because OSHA will come looking for you. A long time ago, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take the, uh, the cap off the top of the motor. This helps the oil drain faster and gets your job done more efficiently. A few ratchets here. Oh, Brad don't want a ratchet. You go a little bit, and then you do it a few more times. Now that you got it loose, you should be able to reach up here and move it with your fingers. Now watch it, because this stuff's supposed to be hot. And don't watch them TikToks where it shows you get nothing on your hands because it never happens. You get ready and you get closer and it goes on now. Oh, look at that black hole. Woo! Now sit here and let your oil drain out. Look at that oil flow, boy. Uh oh. This ain't cool. Make sure your pan is level so all your oil will drain efficiently. We didn't spill none, so the EPA and OSHA won't be looking for me yet. Do the hard part then getting out of the car. Oh, I got oil on my pants. And see, this is why previously in the video we anticipated the need rags. Come over here and you get you some rags. You drop the rags on the ground, spill oil everywhere, and try not to put oil on the entire thing of rags. <laughs> then you drop the rag on the ground. <laughs> I drop my stuff all over the ground. Gotta pick it up off here. See, and then you gotta bend over, hurt your back, get all kinds of upset your stuff down and then you gotta roll all this back up and it's just such a mess man you see this is why nobody does their own oil changes anymore you just take it into the shop do it for a hundred bucks never have to worry about it again now next we're gonna need this oil filter wrench because we gotta go back under this car and pull the oil filter off of it so let's go meanwhile uh you know testing there this is not useful at all if it's done correctly a new car state that it only needs to be hand tight um well it's hand tight and it's too big to go on anyway no, you don't need this. Now, we are going to go in there and take it off by hand, so let's get to it. this thing. Right, there it is, right there. Oil filter should be up on the side of your block of your car. Thankfully for this one, it's right here within reach, and with it being just hand tight, you can just sit here and turn it, and it's come straight off. And look at that. Right into the thing, pan where it's supposed to be. Sit here, and you screw it off. Oh, that's a lot of threads. One eternity later. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh, I spilled some. APA is going to come for me. Oh, no. Oh, and we do, in fact, have an oil ring on the filter. That is very important. Because if that right there gets stuck to the block, then, uh, it can make your next oil filter not work right. So that is on there and that is good. We'll set that in there and leave that. And now it's time to crawl back out of here. Next thing that starts here is your unpacking part of the video. So you go up here and you unpack your brand new shiny oil filter. And look at that, ooh. Now see another thing that you gotta unpack is your oil. And the reason why is you need to take oil and put it around this new oil ring so when you start the car up, it doesn't exactly, you know, explode. And so you need to also fill sometimes, depending on the car, you need to fill the oil filter with oil first before putting it on. So you need to fill all that up till it's nice and full. And make sure you have plenty of oil around the oil filter. Now this one being sideways, I ain't gonna fill the oil filter up too much, if any. Pull on this oil ring instead of filling it up all the way because the way it goes in sideways, like I said. And just make sure this is nice and lubricated before we put it on there because it's better for it to work. So all right, let's go put this thing on. Well, let's go. <laughs> Oh. oh gosh, oh, so it goes up right in here and you should line it up with your threads and you go to start screwing. Oh uh, wait, hold on, see, I talked about this. Important is all good out, put oil on here and we didn't put oil on it. So let's go back out and unbox our oil. Wee. Much, much, much later. Unbox our box of oil. Didn't know they made it in boxes until here recently. Let's push open here and it's actually a bag of oil inside of a box. I guess you just open it like that. Grab the lid here. Yep. Yep. Come on. Oh, no. Oh, come on. No, no. Okay. 
Hold on. We'll get down here eventually. Three days later. There we go. That's all right. Well, now it's time to open it. Open. You open it. And, uh, well, had one of these nice little pull things that usually breaks, and then you had to cut it with a knife. Well, there we go. It actually did. It actually worked this time. So, what you do is take your oil filter, nice and fancy, right here, and you pour your little oil on it. That's eh, probably too much, but it's there. Okay. Spill oil all over the place. Take it and put it up on this ring. And take it out and run it around a few times. Make sure you get in there good and get all this little black ring right here covered in oil. Because if it's not, it will not seat properly and then you'll have to replace it again in a few little minutes. Alright, well that looks nice and oiled up so let's go put it on. This time, preferably without having to stop. Many unbearable hours later. Make sure to have a little thing sticking out, get it all nice and lined up. Make sure you don't cross thread it. And you start screwing it on. Nice and easy, just like that. All right? You sit there and you screw it around until it gets tight. And once it gets tight, you don't want to do too much more on it because it's says hand tight. So, with it being oily, you want to take both hands and turn it till it's nice and firm. Real tight because that is what they want from the factory. So now that that's on there nice and good, you can go ahead and put on your oil plug. So that's going to go right where you took it off from. It should screw right up in there as soon as you get it straight, which might take considerably longer than anticipated. One semester later. And you keep on here. Nope, I got it. All right, so screw that up until it's nice and hand tight first off. And now that it's nice and hand tight, you can go get your ratchet that you took out earlier and tighten it back up nice and snug. 3.28 a.m. Go tighten it back up. You put on there and you start ratcheting. Get it tight. Then go back one more time. Push it nice and good. There you go. Now you should be good to put your new oil and get back on the road. Meanwhile, opens are resorted to just beating it until it opens. Oh, it worked on one side. Wow, look at that. They just beat the other side. Now it's open too. Now. All right. The next thing you're gonna need is your oil. We already unboxed it, and I don't really know how much of this I need to put in first, so we're just gonna dump a little bit till we get comfortable with the amount of oil that's in there. So, Right now, you turn this around and pour against the directions. Much, much, much later. You give it a second to actually settle on down to the motor and you got your handy rag to wipe your uh, dipstick off with. You pull it out and you should check it every so many, you know, thousand miles. Honestly, you should probably check your oil about once a week just to make sure that you're not burning more than you should. You wipe it off because you can never tell at first how much oil is in there. You wipe it off and you take that thing and you put it down off in there again. Nice and good. Put it all the way down there like it's all the way in. Wait for a second and you pull it back out. And according to this, it doesn't know how full it is because uh, I got some way down there and I got some way up here. I got some all the way up here, but it's not solid. So therefore, that's not how full the motor is. So I'll we'll have to give it another minute and see just how full it's going to get. The next day. After further, you know, studying and checking the dipstick about 15 million times, we've decided that it probably doesn't have enough oil to be on the stick correctly. So we're gonna pour more, more in there. Um, don't really know why it's not showing up on the stick. It might be just way too full. We're about to figure it out. We're gonna pour some oil in there, more oil in there. All right, so now we're gonna give that another few minutes to go ahead and seat down and get to the right level there. And uh, we'll be back in a few. Three days later. So after future and previous studies that we have been committing for the last, I don't know, 10 minutes, it still ain't got enough oil. So, uh, time to pour some more in it. So, you know, hungry motor. Here you go. Now, time to see what it checks at this time. Many unbearable hours later. What you need to do after checking, changing the oil, and making some thinking you have enough oil, is to back it on the level ground and see if it's got an okay amount of oil. So now, we're gonna get in and move the car. 
back off here. Hopefully without breaking or killing anything. Cut the car off, check the old. One semester later. After a long road of trying to make sure if it has enough oil or not, we got it figured out. And this is how you change the rule.